Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today we're exploring art that is hot off the presses. So of course, I'm at Signal Return, a letterpress print shop in Detroit's Eastern Market. We'll learn more about Signal Return and the power of the press fest later in this episode. But our first artist is Detroit Free Press editorial cartoonist, Mike Thompson, who engages his audience with satirical takes on events happening in today's world. Satire can make the unpalatable palatable. It's a great way of communicating with people and for communicating ideas. An editorial cartoon is such a, an approachable medium. It, people can relate to it. And the beauty of it is, is that you can say things in a single image and a few words that it might take a columnist uh, paragraphs to say. There's a very, very long history of political cartooning in America. In fact, Benjamin Franklin published the first political cartoon in America, the famous Join or Die, Divided Snake. And I think it's, you can approach issues and offer solutions in, in ways that you can't with the written word. We're a visually oriented society, and I think people are naturally drawn to political cartoons, especially in the current political environment where social satire is so hot. Being a political cartoonist requires a sort of a unique uh, skill set. I mean, you have to understand the news. You have to be able to write and write concisely. You have to, you have to be able to draw and have a sense of humor. And uh, caricature is an important part of that. But caricature is just something you teach yourself over years. And it's the process of creating an image that resembles the person but doesn't exactly look like the person. So for example, with Trump, I'm taking his most prominent features and the trick is to blow them out as much as you possibly can, but still remain true to uh, the general image of Trump. And that can be a challenge sometimes. My sensors are, uh, are on all the time. I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly trying to come up with an analogy. People ask where I get my ideas, and there's no set way of coming up with an idea. You don't sit down and say, I'm going to come up with an idea. That, it doesn't work that way. It sort of comes to you after I've come up with an idea, then it's a lot of staring at a computer screen because the drawing itself can take anywhere from uh, five hours up. I've spent up to 12 hours on, on a drawing. The actual caricatures of, of the people I draw the old-fashioned way, pen and ink, and then I scan them in. But after that, it's all on the computer. I scan the images in, color them in in Photoshop, and then I'm doing the background or, or other objects. You can do things that were unimaginable when I first started out in this career. The lighting, the color, the texture, it, it's really an amazing time to be doing this job having a, a point of view that drives your opinion and drives your work is critical. My job is not just to create jokes about the news. My job is to comment on the news in a hopefully funny, pithy, or ironic fashion. And that's going to be driven by my ideology. There's a real appetite out there in America for the type of work that I do. And then you throw into that mix the fact that Donald Trump is in the White House. It's a really exciting time to be doing this job. My job is to get people thinking and get people talking and to advocate for issues and, and people who have been getting churned up in this current political system of ours. Really, my audience, I hope, would be anyone who is interested in news and interested in the world around them. One of the really nice things about a political cartoon is that you can advocate for issues that might not be getting as, as much attention. With Trump becoming president, the challenge is to talk about important issues that don't intersect with him. Well, he's president of the United States, so it's sort of hard to come up with ideas that don't intersect with, with the president of the United States. I mean, even things like the Flint water crisis. Well, today I'm working on some line art for an animation I'm going to be doing on Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. 
It's an animation about the amount of money that's being spent for her private security. And uh, I'm suggesting that they should instead just give her a voucher and let her hire mall cops. It's empowering, but there's also a huge responsibility that goes along with the job. I'm exaggerating, oftentimes, events. I'm uh, exaggerating what people say. There also has to be a kernel of truth underlying everything that I do. You know, I can't deliberately uh, misrepresent someone's policy position. So you know, I'm giving them a lot of license, but there, there is a responsibility, not only in terms of how I approach my job, but in, in making sure that I stay within the boundaries of common sense and, and good taste. I get an enormous amount of response to my work, and the response runs the gamut. But even the negative response, I don't mind. If I'm gonna put out an opinion in a public forum, then I better be able to take it when people want to tell me what they think of my work. My goal is to start a conversation and to get people thinking. And if they're gonna think and take five minutes to sit down and write me an email, even if it's negative, they have sat down and thought about it. And that's positive. With everything that's going on in America, you need a laugh or, or you need someone who's there who you think gets it and is saying it in public and is saying it in a way that is biting or sarcastic. People are so confused and so upset that when they see someone who can encapsulate what they've been thinking in an image and, and a few words, it's very powerful. The other part of the job is, is to stand up for people and issues and, and causes that, that don't really get a lot of coverage. Social justice issues, for example. I mean, you look at what's happening in the country with anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism. Uh, those problems existed before Trump, but they've been amplified. And there needs to be people in public positions, in a public forum, pushing back against that. And if you can do it in a biting and sarcastic fashion, all the better. You can learn more about Mike Thompson as well as all the artists we feature on DetroitPerforms.org.